But tonight, I've got head to head with a man who actually wants to deport me. Alex, suicide pills. Alex, mass murder pills. Okay, let me ask you one question. Without an overarching mission, you come up with a turkey. And welcome to the seventh and final episode of Season 1 of The Cab Show. In this episode, Stopping Power, Busting Gun Myths, IBT-98 is going to give us a good definition of stopping power in his journey to quell gun myths. So before we begin, if you are a creationist, conspiracy theorist, flanker, or fulcrum fanboy, or simply disagree with us, feel free to post a comment in the comment section, contact us on Skype, or contact us on Discord. And be sure to read our channel's about section to review our guidelines and policies. I'm Gaelic14MC. I'm everything man 987. I'm IBT98. I'm the Doge Knight. IBT, you have the stage. Thank you. On this episode of The Cab Show, I, IBT98, will be talking about stopping power. Myths about terminal ballistics and stopping power related topics in farms are a rather large as well as a very messy and complicated topic. Though in truth, the myths tend to be a good mix of misunderstandings as well as poor information. The main misconception is stopping power and all the details associated with it. Stopping power has been controversial to what it is and how it is defined. This is the definition as read from the popular community-based and open editing website that is used for information purposes, known as Wikipedia. The definition is as follows. Stopping power is the ability of a firearm or other weapon to cause enough ballistic trauma to a target, human or animal, to immediately incapacitate and thus stop the target. The definition can be rather broad and not to mention other problems with this definition. However, Wikipedia is prone to bias and false information. Wikipedia's Stopping Power article demonstrates this very point. Though the initial definition is not in total wrong, however, Wikipedia's erroneous article to follow has again proven many misconceptions and false information within the subject. The first time stopping power was truly historically noted was about the Filipino-American War of the 1890s, after the U.S. Army's 38 long Colt revolvers proved to be ineffective against the intoxicated Moro warriors until the U.S. Army returned to the .45 long Colt, which had proved to be very effective and capable of stopping and killing Moro warriors with a single shot. The long history has followed and many myths have started because of such many of which can be harmless misconceptions to dangerous ideas and advice spread via forum board. This episode will be a part of my work in finding a good definition for stopping power, as well as many, many parts to scientifically looking at stopping power and thus stopping gun myths dead in their tracks. This episode will discuss the basics and debunk some of the many common myths, as well as explain key details of stopping power which will include a good overview of the physics and biological factors. This episode, however, is only a single part to many future works to come. This episode is intended to be an introduction as more of this work will be posted in the future, not only with ballistic studies, but other subjects that includes a heavy emphasis on physics and mathematics studies that tie in with other subjects on the CAP show. To start, I want to talk about a misconception about recoil. This seems to be a very common myth. The myth is that because of Newton's third law, the same energy of the bullet is the same energy of the recoil, meaning that the shooter, in their mind, is absorbing 400 joules of kinetic energy. That is very much not true as well as a violation of the conservation of energy and momentum impulse. If a human hand or body took 400 joules of energy, the person would most likely have died as well as having a body seriously destroyed and deformed though it is seen that the shooter does not suffer from such a fate. However, the target will be the one to suffer such a violent fate. It is true, Newton's third law is a huge part of the laws of physics. However, this is often quoted by many gun experts who lack or do not acknowledge Newton's first and second law as well as the conservation of energy, among others. Thus, to gain an understanding of this, a demonstration by a physics scenario is in order. If a person was firing a gun, 
The gun, say in this scenario, has a mass of 4 kilograms. The bullet has a mass of 0.015 kilograms. The bullet leaves the barrel at 300 meters per second. We can calculate the kinetic energy of the bullet as about 675 joules. But the gun would only have about 2.53 joules. To understand why, we must understand basic kinematics as well as the conservation of energy and momentum impulse. The blast of the explosion from powder, say, produces a force of 5,000 newtons. Now, with Newton's second law, a net force or some force will always cause a mass to accelerate. Depending on the magnitude of force and the time that force lasts will depend on the acceleration, but with time, it will depend on the time that object is accelerated or decelerated by a net force to change the motion of the object. The law is recognized in the simple algebraic equation of net force equals mass times acceleration. The change in motion, or state, ties into Newton's first law. An object in motion will remain in motion, or an object will remain at rest, until a net force acts on the object. The object will remain in a straight line while in motion until a force acts upon it to change direction or velocity. If a net force remains zero to keep the object in motion, an object can remain not only in current velocity, but as well as turning if the net forces acting on the object remain zero in all directions and dimensions, as turning means a constant change in direction, thus force acts on the object to change direction. However, when the object is let go, it will then go into a straight path at the point where the force stopped acting on it, unless the external force acts on the object to cause a curve in its flight. Thus, an object by itself with no means of exerting a net force nor force acting on it cannot change its motion or direction. However, this can be addressed in more detail later. Let's return to the original scenario now that we have a basic and strong understanding of Newton's first and second law. We'll now go back to the gun firing scenario. The explosive force of the charge is going to accelerate both masses. The force lasts about 0.0009 seconds. In that time, the bullet is accelerated to 333,333.333 meters per second squared. Thus, after the force is no longer acting on the bullet, the bullet will be traveling at 300 meters per second. The impulse, to which impulse is related to momentum, and that is what momentum is, impulse of force, to which it can be said is fueled by energy, in which momentum is fueled by kinetic energy, kinetic energy exerts a force. It will occur for a time, thus impulse. This concept in physics will be discussed in much greater detail in the future. However, it is its importance is ultimate in this scenario. That force of 5,000 newtons acts on the gun. 5,000 newtons over 4 kilograms is about 1,250 meters per second squared. Multiplied by the time of 0.0009 seconds, we get 1.125 meters per second velocity. The impulse is 4.5 newtons a second. Thus, the momentum of each object is 4.5 kilograms per meter second. Both objects will have equal momentum from the impulse. However, they will have different energies. This is a misconception that many people have about this. So what about energy? Energy is the ability to do work, the ability to exert a net force or an external force over a distance. The same force will occur for a time. The time it takes the object to stop or as long as the force acts on the object and with Newton's law, the force on the bullet is the same on the target. This concept will be discussed more in the future. The energy is transferred from the chemical potential energy of the gunpowder. However, with the conservation of energy and momentum impulse, energy will not be equal for each object, but equal in, this, in the whole system. The bullet will take more of the energy as the force accelerates it to a greater velocity and the time the force is exerted upon it. This concept, again, will be discussed in greater detail in the future. Thus, to conclude, the bullet has a lethal 675 joules of energy, while the gun only has 2.53 joules. It should go without saying, the energy on the user is much safer, especially compared to the energy on the target. The next part, we'll talk about the physics and medical topics of gunshots, as well as talking about wounding mechanisms in relation to the work energy theorem. 
This will also help cure any myths involved with stopping power and open more room for further works as well as discussion in the future. In the talking about recoil paragraph, basics of classical Newtonian mechanics were presented. This next part will include a basic look, look at energy, work energy, and classical Newtonian mechanics and fundamental algebra that is involved with firearm and stopping power. Thus, to start, we shall use the bullet used last time, the 675 joules of kinetic energy. 675 joules has the potential to exert a force, or in better definition, it will transfer that 675 joules of energy by work into the medium of any object or substance it's in contact with. As the bullet is losing energy, the material or the particles it is in contact with by Newton's third law will gain that energy. That means the energy lost at any point is related by the force times the distance the energy is lost. We can go into more detail later. However, the forces of impact with many things will destroy or deform objects. With a bullet impacting, they create cavities by transferring energy to the material. Bullets, again, will lose their energy. Thus, a retarding force occurs, which by Newton's third law, a, fo a force the bullet exerts on the target occurs that is both equal and opposite. The bullet does work, which exerts this force over a distance in which energy lost having the force decelerate the bullet, but accelerate the material of the target, and the target as well. Thus, the distance in which the bullet has lost the energy can vary by the amount of retarding force. Larger the force means the stopping distance is less. However, that also means the larger magnitude of force can cause more damage. That means the more force can mean the most energy transfer and or more force for less distance. That can ensure no overpenetration and the most lethal outcome of impact. The retarding force in a fluid medium such as air or flesh relates onto the drag profile. We can find the force of impact of the impact as a whole by work energy theorem. Though whether the object is solid and very rigid or gelatin and fluid-like, these forces may not always be constant in impact by a variety of factors. We can calculate the impact force, which for the whole impact we will assume constant force by work energy theorem. We know that a work non-conservative is a external net force times displacement times cosine theta. This is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Thus, we know work transfers energy into different forms. However, a external force or non-conservative work will change the total mechanical energy of the object. We will be using external force for now as it changes the total mechanical energy, unlike conservative forces, which change the form of total mechanical energy in the object. However, the total mechanical energy will remain the same. This will be discussed more in the future. The force of a bullet impact can be calculated using simple kinematics. This will be discussed more in the future as well. However, the force is the same either way as they must be for a number of reasons. Though measuring out kinetic energy lost over a distance to obtain the impact force is much easier. This is why work energy theorem is very practical and best used for these situations. Though if the force is a variable, we can calculate the force or energy transfer by finding the energy lost at a specific distance in the overall stopping track of the bullet. This is an example. Using the previous mentioned 675 joule bullet, if the bullet comes to rest in a distance of 0.30, 40 meters, or 12 inches, it can be found the force of impact, assuming the force is constant with the equation of Ke over displacement. With that, the 675 joules lo lost over the 0.30, 48 meters means the force of impact will be 2,214.56 newtons. The forces and energy transfer are the causes of the three, main, three and main types of wounding and damage mechanisms, specifically to a living organism. The first wounding mechanism is direct permanent cavity or wound. The forces of impact and bullet to material contact crush, tear, sever, and puncture tissue. 
deforming the object and or material past the zone of elasticity and plasticity to where the material is permanently destroyed, leaving a visible cavity of which forces have exceeded the tissue's tensile strength. The wound is visible, making it the most recognizable symptom of a gunshot wound. The permanent cavity causes bleeding, and the tract can permanently destroy, disrupt, and shatter organs and bone structures. The second wounding mechanism is considered by many to be irrelevant, while others consider it to be incredibly important. This is the temporary stretch cavity. It can be seen as either a direct or non-direct wounding mechanism. This is because the temporary stretch cavity can open a wound of accelerated flesh and bone, which can damage, destroy, disrupt, and displace vitals as well as skeletal structures with considerable distances from the permanent wound cavity. The forces of impact relate to this mechanism. There is considerable evidence that points to its effectiveness with many attackers having vitals and nerves destroyed or disrupted by the temporary cavity far from the bullet track. This is well documented for how the temporary stretch cavity has broken bones, fractured ribs, and caused lung contusions. Even removing limbs, which should be very much a given when considering the magnitude of these impact forces. This can also increase the size of the permanent cavity, as forces can crush tissues even without direct bullet contact. However, it is known and most commonly seen that a large temporary stretch cavity which generates from the high amounts of energy transfer can cause nerve disruption not only to the nerve branches, but in the central nervous system, stopping nerve impulses as well as causing neuropraxia or temporary motor and sensory nerve paralysis some cases leading to permanent nerve damage without, a, without any bullet contact, which can mean the damage was caused by the forces of impacting stretch cavities. The temporary stretch cavity is, is much larger typically than the permanent cavity, as the elasticity of human tissues will have the kinetic energy turned into elastic potential energy, meaning tissue not permanently crushed will reconstitute to a degree. This happens typically over a time period by 1 by 10 to the negative 4 seconds. However, these forces may be short in duration. The rapid acceleration can cause fatal injuries and extreme damage to the target. The third main wounding mechanism, hydrostatic shock, very much related to hydraulic shock of tissues, and the ballistics pressure wave, which originates from the forces of impact. Hydrostatic shock is very related to hydraulic explosive effects of accelerated tissues that we know as the temporary stretch cavity. However, hydrostatic shock and the ballistics pressure wave for this purpose shall be categorized into two branches in the third wounding mechanism. The ballistics pressure wave is a pressure wave related to the force over area. It is no different than any other explosion. A shock wave is produced that could be very lethal. 65 PSI is typically the pressure wave needed to have 99.9% .9 fatality chance, according to the U.S. Air Force, in an explosion. A wave, which will be discussed more in the future without going into too much detail, will travel through a medium. A ballistics pressure wave is no different than one from a chemical explosion except for velocities, magnitude, and ranges, however, as it decays in the medium. This pressure wave is just like shooting in water or having an explosion in water. A wave will travel through. This can be extremely lethal. Though depending on the pressure, which we will discuss more in the future, it will have different effects and other variables will come into play. However, this all ties into the location of pressure. The magnitude of pressure at certain points, as it should be noted, the pressure wave, much like the temporary stretch cavity, will typically expand radially around the bullet track. The equations will be discussed more in the future. However, the massive pressure waves found can be found six inches or more away from the bullet track. The pressure waves around 600 PSI or greater, which can damage tissue and organs severely. These pressure waves have been observed in the brain, forming cuff-like patterns from dogs shot in the thigh from low-energy handgun rounds, energy around 300 joules or less to be exact. This data is from Chinese ballistic test groups. These patterns have been observed in shooting bison. 
Bison shot in the lower thorax around the heart and lung areas gave interesting insight as bison that dropped quickly despite not having observed stretch cavities impacting the nerve areas, which one might suggest upon initial observation. However, it was later found that large pressure weights formed deformations in the brain tissue, killing the creature with a single shot from a centerfire hunting rifle. However, some cases have shown people's deaths from brain trauma originating from wounds to the stomach and lower trunk areas of the body. Body. There is also, again, hydrostatic shock, which is accelerated fluids in the body, not just a ballistics pressure wave. These fluids in the body are accelerated as previously demonstrated large magnitude forces of impact act on them. A quote from Courtney's and BTG's work about this goes along the lines of this example. How it is very similar to hitting a rubber hose with a hammer. The water inside the hose is ejected rapidly. The fluids in the body are accelerated at such a great velocity that when stopped, they create hemorrhaging, hydraulic explosive or overpressure, which is capable of causing destruction as well as a popping effect, which rupturing occurs inside the organs and blood vessels. The effects are most notable in the brain, with patients both deceased and living having fatal brain trauma to mild injuries that can have a noticeable effect in patients, not only causing brain damage, which can have effects instantly, but some victims having neurologic degradation in many parts of the brain as a result of hydrostatic shock effects. There are many cases of this. However, both this topic and more will be covered in the future. Furthermore, many works and research papers will be sourced down in the description to read. In conclusion, one must understand that these forces involved are incredibly and, quite literally, bone-shattering. Although these forces of great magnitude may only last for a short time, the damages they cause are lethal to all things. The episode is just an intro into a larger subject that will be covered. In time, we could put down gun myths and keep them down for good. I, IBT-98, will be continuing much of this subject and more in the future as promised. I have posted many sources as well as further readings into this subject and more in the description below. I encourage comments, whether questions, discussion, advice, etc. I encourage anyone who disagrees with me to voice their opinion. I'll be more than glad to have a civilized debate. My Skype is in the description below as well as the cab guest chat. We encourage fans of the cab show to help us grow and support us any way possible. We understand that we have very few uploads. However, we plan to change that in the future while delivering quality content. Thank you. And that was IBT98 giving us a correct definition of stopping power in his journey to stop gun myths. My name is dalek 14 mc If you found something wrong with the video, feel free to post a comment down below. Constructive criticism of our episodes is encouraged. If you want to talk to us, feel free to contact us on Skype or Discord. Links will be in the description. This was the final episode of Season 1. The first episode of Season 2 will be coming soon. However, we are currently undecided about what it will entail. Until then, I'm Dalek14MC. I'm everything man 987 I'm IBT98. I'm the Doge Knight. See y'all later. Hello everyone, this is Dalek14MC. A lot of you have probably noticed that I've deleted my account. Many people have been speculating about why I deleted it, and it was purely for personal reasons. However, I do have another account up, dalek 14 mc mk 2 Links will be in the description. This is acting as an archive channel where I'm uploading remastered versions of my old videos, even though I do have some new videos up right now. I'm currently undecided about whether this will be a full-time YouTube channel, but until then, if you want to see my old videos, then feel free to subscribe, if you want. This is dalek 14 mc signing off.